Hey, it's Mike Stevenson here. So in this video, we're going to have a look at um, something I've been doing to try and make the management of my email a bit better. So you, you probably came to this from my blog post and um, I've kind of got the point where I'm so sick of spending hours of my life um, sorting out email. Um, I've decided to use Power Automate to do some of that for me. So um, there's a, a post about a simpler version of this um, for people who have less complex requirements for email sort of management. But um, for my sort of small freelancing business, I get a lot of different emails from all sorts of places. And I, I kind of have these requirements where some emails I just want to move to a red folder. Some I want to sort to like um, folders based on things like specific customers and certain people I want to go in, in certain folders and that kind of thing and also um, I want to what I want to do is kind of get rid of all the noise of emails I've read that aren't, aren't really very useful um, so things like like this one here I might have got an alert from meetup and you know you, it, what often happens is um, you try your best to keep on top of your email but before you know it you've you've read some you've got some going back across a couple of days and some you may or may not have read um, and, and things like when you put rules in, sometimes you, you're cautious because your rule might put some junk that it thinks is junk in the junk folder, or you you know you just automatically send it to deleted items, but you've then missed something useful. So what I really want to do is be able to have a job where I can run it, and it'll um, it'll basically go through all my email. If I haven't read it, it just keeps it in the inbox. If I have read it. Um, I'll have two lists, so, so you can see here I've got a bunch of emails I'm going to show you, so there's, there's some fairly typical um, noise that we get where some of these I might not want to just have them automatically go to junk because some of them could be important, you know, you've got like um, some password stuff in there, something from experience, so you know I want to know about them but when, you know, I don't want to spend all day kind of um, putting them in folders and stuff, so what we've um, what we've got is um, I'm going to create an end of day or on demand job that I'm going to go through my inbox and basically sort out as much as I can. Now, what we'll do to begin with, I'm going to go into Microsoft Teams, and over in Microsoft Teams, I've created a um, a team called Mike's Personal Productivity, and I've got this email channel. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create three lists. I'm going to create a list of email folders, a list of email domain mappings, and a list of email address mappings you can see across the top here. So one of the things about Outlook is to address a folder in Outlook, you need an ID for that folder. So it makes it a bit more difficult than just going, here's a path, put them in that path. You need to know the ID for the folder. So I'll I'll there's, I'll do a separate post about how to get these IDs I think, um, but what I'm going to do here is, this is a list in Teams where I've got the friendly name for a um, for a folder and I've just got its ID here and I've got a little comment uh, flag so I can see, control which ones you see in the demo because I've got a few customer folders and that which I probably shouldn't show in a demo, but I can say right here's the red anything R route to the red folder I'll just have the ID in a list here and I can kind of look that up. So here we've got my email domain mapping and I've got a list here and basically I can just put the domain for an email um, in this list and I can pick a target folder. So this is really just a reference to the emails folder list. I can pick a friendly folder and it'll automatically know the ID. Um, for that folder because it's in the other list. So that gives me an easy way to reference a quick route. So any emails from Amazon go to my Amazon folder, any from Serverless 360 go to my Covi folder. There's ones for my accountant. I can also, I've got this ignore column, so I can choose to turn a rule off if I want temporarily, so I can just mark it as ignore. Then um, I've also got my email address mapping list where I can specify you know the, the specific email address um, I can choose to turn a rule off or on again with the ignore column and then I can pick a folder where I want that email to go to so for example these ring ones I'll just send them to my um, my red folder 
If I get any notifications from Azure DevOps, I'll just push them to my deleted items folder. Um, and again, it's it's just a reference to the other list, so it brings the ID through for me. And, um, and what I can do as well, I, when I show you the Power Automate flows, um, what I want to do is any any new email addresses that aren't in this list, I'll automatically add them with um, with them being disabled or, or being ignored. So if I want to add a rule, the email address should already be there, and I just choose what folder it goes to and turn it on. So really, what I'm going to do is just manage the root and rules in these lists in Microsoft Teams. So if we have a quick look back, um, you can see I've got all these emails here. So I'm going to have a look through the flows and then we'll run it and um, we'll we'll kind of see what happened to some of these emails. So in my Power Automate here, um, I've got a bunch of flows now. I need, um, I need these to work together because um, it's quite a complex bit of logic. So I need to have a number of flows. So these ones here, they, them top four work together to implement my kind of on-demand batch job to go and sort them out. I also have this one, so any what this one does is any emails that get flagged, so this is a really simple flow I've, I've shown previously in another blog post, um, it just basically moves them and marks them as unread, so any email I flag it moves it to the to-do folder, or the flagged folder I think I've called it, Marks it as unread, and I know that I need to um, do something with that, so it's really given me like a to-do list. But what happens is I've this got this flow here, so that'll go and um, my clean inbox flows like the main one that gets triggered from my um, my flow job, uh, sorry my flow button. And what this does is it'll it'll trigger, and then I've got a few variables just so I can keep a count of what's happening because I'm going to write a message to Teams at the end. And what this will basically do, we get down to the do until, and one of the things, first point to note here is the get emails um, action. So I'm going to get 25 emails at a time. I'm going to include the unread ones. But the problem with this is that I'll keep getting the same emails over and over again if I query the inbox because it's just giving me the top 25 each time. So um, what I'm going to do is when I get them, I'm going to move them. I'm either going to have the process email um, feature I'll show you in a minute, I'll move them or if they're not read I'll put them in a temp folder and what that means is I can use the do until um, and I'm basically going to go go through the inbox until there's no emails left so every time I call get emails I'll do this length function so you can see that here count how many come back and I'll keep doing this until there's none left um, what I'll what I'll then do is each each time I've called this to get some emails, I'll iterate over them. I'm going to extract the email address. I'm going to um, I think this is just for troubleshooting, so it lets me just see the JSON just to make it easier when I was troubleshooting them some things. The email domain, so I'm going to just use the um, so I'm going to use the two lower. And I'm going to split it based on the ampersand and get the, the domain name from that email. And then I'm going to check, is that email read or not? So if it's not read, I'm going to move it to the not read folder. So you can see I've got a folder here. So what I'll what I'll do, everything that's not read, I'll put it in that not read folder. And then at the end, I'm going to move them back to the inbox. Um, and that's just a way to make sure I can go through that inbox and, and not just keep getting the same emails over and over again. So for every um, for every email that is read, I'm going to use HTTP connector to call another flow, which we'll look at in a moment. And what I'm going to do is just pass the um, pass the domain name, and I'll pass the email ID, and I'll pass the uh, from address. I'll then pass the the result coming back. So I'll get an in, and probably saying the email's been removed, and I'll get some string just for diagnostics. And then this is really just going to increment a counter for my um, card at the end in Teams to tell me what the outcome was. And then um, at the end, I'm going to go, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go through all of the emails in the not read folder, and I'm basically going to move them all back to the inbox so that at the end I'll have an inbox full of just the emails that I haven't read yet. So. That, that's kind of the high level logic now if we take a look next at the process email flow 
So what this is going to do, this is going to um, receive a message. You can see we get the email ID from address from domain and it's going to do three things. It's going to check is the should the email be moved based on the email address. So I'm going to call another flow, which I'll show you in a minute, which basically looks at that list and says from the list with the root and rules for email addresses, is there anything that I should do? And it'll come back and it'll give me an indicator of whether to ignore it. And if the indicator's um, false, I should get a folder ID, which tells me where to move it to. And then basically, if, I, if it's um, ignores true, I skip it. If it's false, I'm going to move it to the folder with the ID. So if you note here, because I'm dynamically setting the folder ID, I need to put that prefix in. Um, and then I'm going to return a response saying the email's been moved and it's been put in the folder based on the email address and then I'll end this flow. If it wasn't moved by email address, I'll then check if I need to move it by domain. So I'll call us the other child logic app, uh, sorry, the other child flow from this, um, which again I'll just pass in the three properties the domain, the email address, and the, the message ID. Um, so I'm just passing them straight through from what came into this flow. I'll get back the same kind of response, so I'll get back, do I ignore it or do I have an ID? And again, if I should move it, I'll do a move based on the folder ID, and um, and then I'll just exit. And then at the very end, if I, if I haven't moved it by any other means, I just move it into this needs sorting folder. So that needs sorting folder will have any emails in it that um, I need to manually sort out. They've been read, but I haven't got anything that tells me where to put them. And then what I might do is I might go and um, amend my rules and rerun it, or I might just go, this only happens once in a while, so I'll just manually move it. So if we have a look at the, um, the rootin uh, flows here, so this one of get rootin by domain. So what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna get a message which gives me the ID email address and the domain. I'm going to use the um, the SharePoint list connector to get items. I'm going to get it from my email domain mapping list and I'm going to do a filter where I use the uh, the domain and query the title. If I get a record back, so I've just got some variables down here, so if I get a record back down here I'll check should I ignore that record or not and if I should ignore it so that's in the, the list where I can turn the rule off, I can ignore it and do nothing. But if I shouldn't ignore it, I'll set my variable to say don't ignore it and here's the folder ID. So that, that just comes through as one of the properties on the SharePoint item. And then I'll return those values and I, sh I should know how to route that now. Likewise, the, um, the routing based on email address is, is very similar, um, but there's one subtle difference to it. So this time I'm going to query, you know, I get exactly the same coming in here, but I'm going to do my query based on um, the email address mapping table, looking for the title match and the email address. So you can see that here. Um, I'm going to check for any matches, but the big difference here is if I don't get a match, so to check for the matches, I'm just going to check. Um, the record return to see what the length was so I know whether I've got any matches or not and if I haven't got a match I'm going to add it to that list so that'll build up a list of the emails at addresses who've sent me a message and I can put a rule in for them at a, another point but if you notice that I I set the ignore to equal yes um, as, a, as an easy way of, of me just um, you know adding that but ignoring it until I go and actually put the rule in properly. Um, and again, this, this bit here is exactly the same as the um, domain map, and so I'm just getting the target folder if there was a an item returned and, and it's set to not be ignored. And then I return that response. That's kind of how those flows all, all wire together. So just to recap, um, I'll trigger the clean inbox. It'll then go and call for every email. If it's not read, it'll call process email. That'll use these other two to look up if there's a root and rule, and then and then it'll move them as appropriate. And any emails that aren't read will be put to one side in the temp folder and moved back to the inbox. So if we go back to my emails over here, let's kind of run this and see what happens. So if I go and um, 
run this flow. So we'll let clean inbox start running and doing its thing and we should start seeing these emails moving now. You can see them coming out the out the inbox. run through till it's sorted them all. So, <coughs> so now my inbox is clear. Um, what it'll start doing is any that it put to one side because they were unread, it'll start putting them back in the inbox. So I know that these are messages I haven't read yet. You could hear my alert on my phone. I've got a message um, from Teams telling me that it's finished. So I basically had um, one unread message so I know I've got to read this one, so it's just some rubbish from uh, Shopify, so I can probably get rid of it. Um, what I need to do next is go right in my needs sorting folder. So here's a bunch of emails that I didn't have rules for. So what I can do is um, I can go and basically modify my rules. I should be able to see that there would be an email address added for these, so I'll be to go and add a rule for them. Um, and the, these ones basically need to have a rule added which will let them be moved to other um, other folders and um, and then I could just over time I can just you know I go and basically add a rule for what I want to do with the emails for these if you know if I get regular emails from them so things like my analytics and ring and you can see that was different address to the ring um, email address I already had in there so I know that you know this is my log cabin alarm I think I must have set it off or something at some point um, you know something from HMRC here so I can put rules in for these and um, and over the course of the next couple of weeks I should find that most of the emails I get on a regular basis I'll have a rule for and then I'll you know after a couple of weeks I expect that they'll be they'll be next to nothing to do it'll I'll just run it and it'll automatically sort everything I've got a focused inbox of stuff I need to read, so I think one of the other ones that must have come back is this um, Audible one. I need to, you know, I haven't read that yet. So, you know, what I'll probably do is I'll just get to the point where I'll just in my inbox I'll um, I'll run it, let it get rid of all the all the stuff that can be sorted. I then just get left with the ones that I haven't read yet, so I can go through and, you know, for any that um, that I can just go through and. You know, like the Audible one or the Shopify one, I might just mark them as red and let it get rid of them, or or something like that. Um, but it'll the, the idea is just continuously tweaking it, and it, it'll mean you get rid of you know most of the email in your inbox should be able to be sorted automatically, and it, it just turns that task of um, you know once every week or so, or every couple of weeks, just ripping your hair out, having to spend an hour or two. Um, sorting out email that you've already read so you can work out what you can delete and that kind of thing that that should just go away and it, it should let you focus on what you're trying to do um so hopefully this video has been useful um thanks for listening